Good evening. It is Tuesday, April 25th at 6.30. We have a quorum, and I'm calling this meeting to order. We are very lucky tonight. We have two uh, individual students with us, and I'm going to call them forward. We have Juan Ramirez. Juan, if you'll come on up. And he's already looking at Arwen, so we're going to let her come up, too. And Arwen Ayala. And these two students are um, in finishing up their sophomore year, so they're getting ready to be big bad juniors, which is really a whole lot of fun. They are both on the Youth Advisory Council here with the city, and they are on the Youth Advisory Board, which is um, associated with the Family Crisis Center. They're in robotics and band. Um, Juan Play is a percussionist, and he is an expert at all things percussionist, so not any specialty. And Arwen plays both alto and Barry sax, so we had lots of things to talk about, and it gets even better. Um, Arwen is thinking about going into political science engineering, so of course we had an engineering discussion, and she's hoping to go to Rice and, yes, Kevin, A&M. So um, we'll, we'll see how plans work out for her. And um, so she'll learn how to, you'll learn how to say howdy if that works out for you. And um, Juan is considering um, the biochemistry or architecture or maybe even music. And the beauty is when you are this age, you don't have to make lifelong decisions. And we live in a world where you get to do more than one thing that you love. So if you will please rise, these young people will lead us in the pledges this evening. you please give these young people a round of applause and you guys hang out. Colin's going to take your picture. Thank you very much. And if you will please remain standing, we are honored to have Ketrick Steger, who is not only the police chaplain, but he's also a, the pastor for the refuge. And um, we just found out that we have some more friends in common. So if you will uh, please remain standing, he'll lead us in our invocation tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Father, we thank you for your grace this evening. We thank you for your love and kindness that goes beyond our imagination. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for family. We thank you for health and strength. And this evening, Lord, we do lift up our city manager, Seba, Lord, and her family. Lord, we just speak blessings over them, Lord, as you strengthen them, Lord, as they go through this season. Father, we bless them. We bless this city. Lord, we ask you, Lord, for your peace. Lord, you tell us to pray for the peace of the city. So, Lord, we pray for your peace, your shalom. Lord, that the, that the uh, elimination of the havoc of war in our hearts will be dismissed. And Lord, you also tell us to pray for your kingdom to come, your will to be done. Lord, I pray that for the city of Bastrop, that your righteousness, Lord, will reign, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, for your peace and your joy to have its way, Lord, and that your word will run swiftly through the streets and through our homes, and our families will know the joy that you have spoken of. We bless this time for your wisdom to rest upon this council, and Lord, that we will hear from heaven, and Lord, we will understand your ways. And we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. All right, um, we're going to do the mayor's report, and I have a couple of things first. One, she may or may not be watching. I doubt she's watching. Councilmember Lee is celebrating her birthday, and she's out of town. That's why she's not with us. Although, Councilmember Lee has explained to Mayor Pro Tem and I that it is a month-long celebration. It is not a single day. So she is starting her month-long celebration. And um, thank you to Mr. Job for sitting in for the city manager, and you could tell from the prayer. She's got, there's some family health things going on, um, and all of council made it extremely clear to her that there was nothing more important than her family. So if you would keep them in your hearts and prayers that would be appreciated. 
Um, a little bit along those lines, uh, I wanted to share with the community that um, Bill Swinney passed and he was 99 years old. He would have been 100 in July and he was one of our World War II veterans. And um, we are very, very blessed to have a few and they always show up at the red, white, and blue dinner. Uh, but everybody will remember Bill because he still wore his uniform from when he served in World War II. So uh, he and uh, we wanna keep Brenda and his family in our, in our prayers as well. And I have some great news, Council. I got, we got notified yesterday that House Bill 3324 that will help us get the hotel tax that the state collects back in the community will was voted out of the committee unanimously, so we are on a good path. That's not the same as signed, but that's so much better than not making it out of committee. So we're very happy about that. Okay, Colin, we can jump right in. This is what I did between April 10th and the 24th. And um, Colin, we're gonna start, I think, upper left and kind of work around. Uh, this was a live after five at TCS and had a great time. I appreciate TCS sponsoring the Alive After Five event. And I was speaking with the owner and we visited for a little bit and he said, okay, you're now the only other person in Bastrop that really understands what we do out here. So um, found out that uh, we talked about clean rooms and um, manufacturing a little bit. Um, and then the next, the following Thursday, I was at A&M, Kevin, went, drove right by Kyle Field. I was asked to, asked to speak to the Bush School of Government and Public Service and gave a speech on a mayor's perspective of hiring and working with a city manager. So I don't know if I'll be invited back or not, but they did let me um, get share my opinion with them. Um, and then on Saturday, let's see, Colin, I lied to you. Let's jump up on Friday, upper right-hand corner. I see Miss Fossler in the audience, and we uh, Friday evening we did community jam. This was uh, right before we all started sweating and doing some Bali X, and you have got to come out and join us. We have a great time doing that. And just below that was senior day at the Art Center, and I was so happy to meet a bunch of people who had not been in the Art Center before, and they got to spend some time together. They were playing dominoes and cards, and uh, really appreciate Samai working to pull all of that together. And when I was there, Samai said, you need to run out to Bob Bryant that the, um, there was a group of kids that were meeting with their mentors and um, Colin, that's just to the left. And uh, one of the ways they lure them out was they had the game, the traveling game trailer that <clears throat> you guys have seen once in a while, had a great time visiting with the kids. And that was all Friday. Then Saturday morning, Colin goes straight across. I did the uh, Lions Convention, the state, conv the big district convention was, um, they started out at Community Gardens and I spent some time visiting with their governor, Brandon Mond. And um, we have a lot of people in our community that are a part of the Lions Club and we were so glad that they chose to um, be with us. And then when I left there, I went to the Central Texas Walking Art Tour and um, that was fantastic and fabulous weather, weather on Saturday. And then, uh, let's see, I think then that brought us to Sunday night and Table on Main, and there's a picture to give you an idea of what Table on my table on Main inside the convention center looks like. Uh, the rain held off, but the cold wind, everything, everybody was glad that it was relocated. And there's a picture of, I uh, want to recognize Jennifer Long, who's the chair of Main Street. And she and her team worked really hard and hats off to um, the restaurants, Mr. Plunkett, uh, Sonia Cote cooked the steaks at Storehouse. We had Fab uh, Kevin and his team helped me learn that apparently I like grits because I had never tried them before, but they were really, really good. The food was fabulous. The band was fantastic. The dance floor was full the whole night and just really, really had a good time. And then right before Table on Main, um, many of you know that Mayor Pro Tem Rogers is uh, has is halfway moved. How do we describe that? On on her way to Arkansas, <laughs> so several of us um, got together. Her friends threw a party, a farewell party for. Her. She's heading off to Arkansas, and some of the. Uh, 
relocated Ar Arkansonians, I don't know, people from Arkansas, Arkansans, is that what they are? They are crazy people, and they were teaching her how to call the pigs, so we made sure that she's, ha the hogs, see they're pigs to me, because, you know, so how to, how to call the hogs, I, I know I've got, I can already see my phone lighting up after that comment. Um, yesterday, I, um, bottom right now, Colin, yesterday morning, I um, voted early voting. This is the reminder that early voting is open and going on, and I am sporting one of the new stickers. The um, County Elections Committee had students turn in designs, and they had the young kids do a sticker for future voter, and the older kids did a sticker of I voted, so I was glad to sport the new sticker. And last night, I did the um, Salinas Award, and this, I know she looks like she could be a student, but that's actually the art teacher. And um, I was asked to give the first time ever Blue Bonnet Budding Artist Award. And I want to recognize that Lily Fields, who is a 10th grader at Cedar Creek High School, was the winner of that award. So um, it was kind of a busy weekend. If you go to the next page, you'll see all the things that I'm going to do between now and the next council meeting. And I just want to mention a couple council. I want to remind you that Friday afternoon, we'll be doing the groundbreaking for the water treatment plant. And on May 4th, and I, I know someone on this dais is going to talk about may the 4th be with you, but so let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. But on May 4th, it is the National Day of Prayer, and I'll be hosting the Farm Street Opry. And uh, my good friend Terry Moore is going to be singing some Patsy Cline songs. She's going to sing some country songs in the first half, and um, many of us haven't heard her sing uh, Patsy in quite a while, so she's going to do several Patsy Cline songs that day. Saturday is the election day, and on May 8th, want to remind some folks that the Visit Bastrop is turning five, and I will absolutely, looking forward to being at their birthday party. We will have a city council meeting on May 9th, and the special council meeting on the 16th will be to canvas the votes. And um, the reason we don't do it on the 9th is because state election law won't let us do it on the 9th. So you can't do it too soon and you can't do it too late and that's why we're doing it on May 16th. So with that, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers, what have you got for us this evening? Well, actually I have been in Arkansas, so I don't have any Le Learning how to or, call the hogs apparently? Um, no, I didn't, ha I came back to Texas to learn that. <laughs> I don't have anything. Council Member Plunkett? Yeah, it's really it's all about how much butter you put in something as to whether or not it's going to taste good. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, but no, uh, really enjoyed Table on Main. I uh, want to give a shout out to especially Sonia and um, at Storehouse and Rhonda uh, Gannon over at our Absolutely. place. They really um, did an amazing job. And Candace, what a great job moving all the decorations and everything. Y'all, I would... I think it's the first time I've been there where they opened the curtains and you could see out the windows. I think that made all the difference in the world. So that was a great job. It was excellent. And I, w I wanted to tell everybody, no, you can't say we want it to look just like table. The, the city did not buy all those tables. That was a <laughs> ton of work by a lot of people. Um, so it, it was very, very well done. Yeah, outstanding job. And... Uh, I wanted to shout out to my daughter, Ava, who voted for the first time yesterday. And that was a, that was a big day. Not sure if she voted for me or not, but well, <laughs> that's, that's between, It's all private, that's right? That's between her and the... <laughs> Councilmember Crouch, you've got a big weekend coming up. I, I do. I think I've trained enough for it, so I'm okay with it. So I am doing the MS-150 this weekend, so look for me on the road. Saturday somewhere, hopefully not on the side of it. Um, this past since last meeting, we had a budget workshop. Um, I attended the candidate forum, which was uh, awesome. It's, it's well put on by the chamber, and congratulations to everybody that was in it and on it. Uh, it was uh, really good and really informative. And then I sat in on the Main Street Board and uh, Ad Hoc Development Group, and that's it since last week. Thank you, Councilmember Crouch. Councilmember Kirkland? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'd like to uh, echo the props on the, uh, the um, 
table on main activity. That uh, it had the possibility for disappointment, uh, but then you walked into the convention center and it was like, wow. And uh, on occasion they set that up in a different way where I walk in and I'm like, where am I exactly? But that, that was one of those nights to just see it the way it was configured and decorations, the lights, the band, I, every bit of it was spectacular. Uh, the second thing is uh, I had a downtown merchant tell me something that I wanted to pass along. Uh, he said that we should give a shout out to Public Works for a great job, for the great job that they do keeping our Main Street sidewalks clean. Yay. And as he showed them to me, he point down, pointed down at them and they were spotless. So, so thanks guys. Yay, Public Works. Is that it? All right. All right, Mr. Job, no pressure, but you're on. Sorry, Mayor, we don't have anything tonight. No, no city manager's report. We were we're gonna we were, get we did not get expect through. It. There we go. All right. I do I see there he is, Andreas. I won't make you stand up here. I'll read it and then we'll come do photo for Colin. Not because I have that much respect for him. All right. We are on item 4D, a proclamation of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, recognizing May 4th, 2023, as Firefighter Day in addition to Star Wars Day. Whereas International Firefighters Day is observed each year on May 4th to honor and remember past firefighters who have lost their lives while serving their communities, to express gratitude to those that have served in this line of work, and to show support and appreciation for those who presently serve. Whereas firefighters follow a long line of tradition and honor that inspires them to help colleagues, neighbors, and strangers alike. At a moment's notice, thousands of firefighters, both career and volunteer, risk their lives every day by quickly responding to uncertain situations. To mitigate danger through such efforts as search and rescue, hazardous material response, and combating the threat of destructive fire in order to protect individuals, families, and the economic being of our community. Whereas firefighters make the ultimate sacrifice to protect the citizens they serve, whether danger is the result of natural or man-made disasters, as witnessed by fire suppression deaths and other contributing causes. Now, therefore, I, Connie Schrader, Mayor of the City of Bastrop, do hereby proclaim May 4th, 2023, as Firefighters Day in Bastrop, Texas. Let's give Andreas and his team a round of applause. I saw, well, I saw they, uh, they just pulled in and they were coming around. They were on a call, so they were running late. So they're just pulled in there in the back. So, so. sit down and we'll just... Okay. <laughs> And I was going to say, my husband was a volunteer firefighter for Bastrop and um, used to jump out the window at the high school and jump on his bike and his motorcycle and fight fires and did it on a regular basis. There were several of them that were in the fire, um, that were volunteer firemen. And my brother is a volunteer fireman in Maryland, so fire, firefighters have a special place in my heart. Um, all right. We're going to let them come in, so we're going to do something that's fast. Um, I, we're at Citizen Comments, and I have Roger Henderson set, signed up for Citizen Comments. Mr. Henderson? All right. Madam Secretary, do we have anyone else signed up for Citizen Comments? No, Mayor. All right. We're going to go on to the consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers, you've asked for item 8C to be pulled. Yes, ma'am. If you'll pull 8C, that would be wonderful. Council, do you have any other items you'd like pulled? Anybody in the audience want a consent item pulled? There's some people here for consent that are real happy that we're calling this. Madam Secretary, if you would please read the consent agenda without 8C. The consent agenda reads as follows. Item 8A, consider action to approve City Council minutes from the April 11, 2023 regular meeting, April 17, 2023, Joint Council and BEADS meeting and April 19th, 2023, pre-budget planning workshop. Item 8B, consider action to approve the second reading of ordinance number 2023-09 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, amending the City of Bastrop, Texas Code of Ordinances, Chapter 3, Building Regulations, Article 3.17, 
flood damage prevention, repealing conflicting provisions, providing for severability, proper notice and meeting, and establishing an effective date. Item 8D, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-59 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a public improvement plan agreement with 71 Retail Partners LP for Bastrop Grove Section 3, lots 9 through 19 as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8E, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-60 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a public improvement plan agreement with MC Bastrop 71 LP for Bastrop Grove Section 5 as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8F, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-58 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a public improvement plan agreement with Hunt Communities Bastrop LLC for Colony Mud 1F Section 3 as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repelling clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8G, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-57 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a public improvement plan agreement with Hunt Communities Bastrop LLC for Colony Mud 1D Section 5 as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8H, consider action to approve resolution number R-2023-66 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, awarding a contract for the update to the 2016 Comprehensive Plan to Half Associates, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $118,240, hereby attached as Exhibit A, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Item 8I, consider action to approve the second reading of Ordinance Number 2023-12 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, amending Chapter 1, Subdivision Article 1.3, Platting Procedures as Section 1.3.003, Lots of Record of the City of Bastrop B3 Development Code by adding a section for existing lots of record who can receive administrative approval outside of the normal platting procedure. Item 8J, consider action to approve Resolution number R-2023-70 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a temporary compensation increase for the city manager while serving as interim director of the Bastrop Economic Development Corporation and authorizing the mayor to execute an addendum to the city manager's employment agreement on behalf of the city of Bastrop. Item 8K, consider action to approve the second reading of Ordinance Number 2023-10 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, amending Article 2.4, Administration, Section 2.4.001, Non-Conforming Uses and Structures, by adding that the intent of the provisions will not create a disparate impact to residents. Item 8L, consider action to approve Resolution Number R-2023 dash 68 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving an interlocal agreement between the City of Bastrop and Bastrop County as attached in Exhibit A, authorizing the City Manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. This concludes the consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Would you mind doing that again? <laughs> just, just. Just teasing. Council? I move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Second. And a second from Councilmember Kirkland. Is there any further discussion? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Kirkland? Yes. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Thank you, Council. The motion carries unanimously. We're going to talk on I-8C because we're required to do it immediately, and then I'll do you guys. I know this weather's making you nervous. 
uh, we're on item 8C, consider action to approve resolution number R2023-65 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, confirming appointment by the mayor of Kevin Mobby to place one and Ron Castan to place nine of the Main Street Board as required in section 3.08 of the city's charter and establishing an effective date. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Yes, ma'am, I, I asked for you to pull this, not, not because I have any issue with these two gentlemen, I feel they'll be fine. I just wanted the public to know because we, Main Street does their board members differently than the rest of our boards. So I just wanted to pull it off so the public knows that the Main Street has recommended these two gentlemen. So they'll be welcomed into the board and I move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Council Member, uh, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Second. And a second from Council Member Plunkett. Um, I also want to add my thanks that you, both of you gentlemen, are willing to serve, and I know that it's going to be a great addition to the Main Street Board. Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Yes. Council Member Plunkett. Yes. Council Member Crouch. Yes. Council Member Kirkland. Yes. Thank you, Council. The motion passes unanimously. Um, the rain sort of let up, and any of you that were only here for consent, you won't hurt my feelings if you bail. I totally get it. All right, firefighters, let's come forward and do the picture. Yeah, absolutely. I can introduce everybody. Uh, this is uh, this is Lieutenant um, is Morgan LeBaron. Firefighter Nate Tomlin and Firefighter Gilbert Dimaville. Uh, all these guys have been here a short time, short time, short time. He's been here the longest, about three years, two years, two, almost three. November will be three years, so full time. Um, and um, we're currently up to 10 paid firefighters. So we have a total of 10, including myself. So thank you guys. And uh, the weather outside. Little dime to quarter size hail came through, and then some pretty heavy rains, 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts. It should move through pretty quick and be on the north end of us pretty soon. So, FY. And take care of that on budget. Um, okay, and I had, there's one other item I'm going to call right away because I have a feeling she has a long drive. Uh, Council, we're going to item 9A, Colin, 9A. Consider action to approve resolution number R2023-63 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving a contract with PHI Health LLC doing business as PHI Air Medical for annual membership for emergency air medical transport in the amount of $32,334, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents and providing for an effective date. Ms. Waldron? Okay, well, I have a slide. Paul, do you have the clicker? All righty. Well, if you want to just click me. There we go. All right. Um, so, PHI Medical Contract provides a membership based program for air ambulance service to all city residents. Um, we have had, this will be the third year. Thought I put that on the slide, but now I'm having to pull that out of the air. Pretty sure this is the third contract renewal that we have had. Um, we are now above 5,000 households, so the fee actually drops from seven to six. And so the total contract for this is 32,334, and that amount is in the budget. And I also wanted to make note that this contract allows for um, citizens to um, add the full national household membership for $30 a year. And um, if y'all have any questions, we do have a representative from PHI with us. So one of the questions that I asked her, which was unfair because she didn't know I was going to ask, was how many citizens took advantage and were benefited by the contract that council approved last year? Well, I hope she knows because I, I She said know. she had sent it to you and Trey. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, in our, in our conversation, wasn't it about 46 a year? Yeah, 46, 47 a year. 
So for the general the public year, to, yeah. to grasp that, what that means, if you are a resident of the city of Bastrop and you have to be air flighted, and let me make it clear, you don't get to call for a helicopter ride. Like <laughs> there is a medical professional that says you need to be teleported. Um, we all know that can be a 40, 50 teleported, tele helicoptered out. Helicoptered. Um, teleported would be more fun, yeah. I'll let you go first on that one. There you go. <laughs> It can be a $50,000 deal and it is not a laughing matter and yeah. it is a huge deal and you think the, the cost doesn't matter at the time, but if that's happening to you, that's probably the first of expensive things that you're going through. So if you are a resident mm -hmm. of the city of Bastrop because council has approved this contract, it is covered whether you have, whether your insurance covers it or not. And so um, with 47 people taking advantage of it and seeing that it's $32,000, really if only one person a year was doing it, mm -hmm. that, that single family it has benefited from the service. And it's, um, as we grow, one of the things that happens is, um, you know, there's kind of a deduction for that and we appreciate it going to $6, but there's more homes. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that on this, you thank you for providing in the backup. Um, we had you had budgeted thirty two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars when we approved the last fiscal year. So um, we're well covered for this, and it's really a great service. Council, do you have any questions for Ms. Waldron? Councilmember Kirkland. Yeah, I've got a few questions. Uh, probably for the service mm -hmm. provider. Just to ask. Okay, and we'll, sure. They'll, she'll jump up if necessary. Great. Um, so my questions have to do with the kind of return on investment for the city or how frequently these are used. Uh, not, not just how many times have a ride been given, but rather uh, the terms and conditions rec say things like that there's 500 cards available, that you have to know the membership number in order to have to be exempt from paying the bill. It says that if you're a Medicaid recipient, you're not allowed to use it. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of restrictions placed upon it. and so. Uh, it, it, it reads like something that uh, p people could potentially not end up actually using. Sure. Um, and so I wanted to, I, I actually do want to know what the financials look like in terms of how that comes together. Uh, but then also, um, uh, the question is somewhere in the ballpark of what are the odds or what is the percentage chance that if an air ambulance is needed that it would be one of these? versus some other provider. And, and I don't know how to gauge that. Is it like a one in 10 or is it a 50% or almost 100% chance that that would be the one that you sure. would get access to? Yep. Uh, just to start out with a couple of the first questions, which are the terms and conditions clause. Mm -hmm. So the terms and conditions at the end, I think the last two pages are attached. There are general terms and conditions throughout the agreement. The um, a contractual part, the countywide coverage portion, uh, that contract actually supersedes our terms and conditions at the end. So there's some verbiage in there, and I'll, I do have the contract, but uh, it would take me a minute to find it. Um, your attorney may have a better idea of it. But those actually, uh, there is a clause in there that states that our countywide terms and conditions supersede those terms and conditions at the back. They're just there for reference only. So uh, Medicaid recipients are not eligible for membership programs by law. So we still transport. They're still covered at 100%, just not by the membership program. Basically, the government will pay uh, PHI or medical for the transport and they pay X number of dollars and that's what we accept. There's no out-of-pocket expense, deductible copay that would fall under that membership program. Um, as far as the number of transports and the likelihood, we are located here, the, the base is actually located here in uh, Cedar okay. Creek. I was going to okay. say Bastrop, I apologize. In Cedar Creek. Because of that, the likelihood is very high. Um, normally, if our base manager was here, he could tell you a little quicker or better than I could based on the number of flights that he's actually doing. I would say we're probably looking at 90 or 95%, just because we're here. Yeah, very likely then. Right, it, okay, it's very a very high likelihood. Yeah. 
um, that we actually handle all or most of the transport. Chief Rosales, have you ever had a different provider? So typically the way it works when we have a call that um, what we'll get, do is go, go to the call and then we uh, start with who's priority and, and in the dispatch center they have a one, two, three. Uh, first priority goes to PHI and if they're unavailable, if they're already on a call or if they're not in service or whatever the case may be, then it rolls to the next and that next could either be uh, Air Evac, which is in LaGrange, or it could go to Austin, Travis County, uh, Starflight. Um, and, and whoever's next in that role, but they get first priority based on the call. So they have the right to accept or refuse based on whatever the circumstances are. But I would say it's pretty close to 90, 95% of the time PHI is who we call just because they're three minutes versus a 15 minute or a 25 minute uh, flight. Yeah. So how, how can we get access to the financial information? As far as the company financial information? No, no, the, the amount paid out, or it's not, it's not, depends upon how it works. So um, if someone doesn't know the membership number, presumably they would get billed. Sure. Yes. So, uh, well, let, let's back up. Kind okay. of uh, operationally, as far as the air medical transport, none of that changes on the front end. Your first mm -hmm. responders still call the appropriate aircraft, person gets transported, whether they're a resident or they're a transient traffic uh, or a visitor to a resident. So all of that's going to happen. On the back side, we typically, uh, we, we have a set, a set of parameters that our patient financial services will go by. It's a resident tr picked up from a resident of X zip code or city. In this particular case, you guys are a city. So we actually have the roster, which states all of the addresses. So our patient financial services team will take a look at that roster and go, okay, that person is eligible. Okay, where were they picked up from? If they were picked up from anywhere in Bastrop County, then that makes them eligible on that backside automatically. Okay. So we try to catch those every time. It, it does, I'm not going to say we're 100%. I'm not going to say we're perfect because we're not. So there are things that slip through the, the cracks or I, occasionally I get the question of a renter or maybe someone that's a property owner here that maybe resides permanently somewhere else. Um, so in those particular cases, we default um, to the patient coming back to us. So they would receive an, a statement of benefits or a statement of services from us. And then we request that they come back to us and um, say, yes, I am a resident or yes, I am a property owner. This is my address and these are my this is my driver's license, I'm a, my utility bill, or my tax bill, or whatever, however we can qualify that person. Um, we, do quite a, we do quite a bit to get the information out into the community regarding the program. Mm -hmm. Like Tracy said, we've, been, we've implement, been in, implemented for three years, so a lot of the residents do know about it. The aircraft is actually very active in community PR and getting the information out there. That you have the 4th of July festival and things like that and they're out here all the time. Career day, all of that. Um, aside from that, we do provide the city with membership cards which can be picked up and then we do provide a press release which can be distributed to the local papers or the news stations uh, and along with a digital or set of digital collateral uh, which can be distributed by social media or just regular flyers. So we do as much as we possibly can to get that out, but I always encourage folks on these programs, we're, we're not here to disqualify people, that's not our goal. We wanna be as inclusive as we possibly can, but we also wanna make sure that the city is paying for the, uh, is getting what they actually pay for. So they're paying for the appropriate residents to be covered and not for other folks which may not be. So that's, we think it's a, a really good system. It works really well. Um, you know, I do have folks that holler at me here and there. And, and that's the other thing. I'm here, I'm the person to, to visit with. Um, so if we have those instances, I'm a phone call away to try to either work through that situation or resolve some issues.
Any additional questions? Yeah, when does the current contract expire? So the current contract expires April 30th. Yeah, that's the date. Right, so 5-1 will be the next uh, term agreement. Okay. We do a yearly type agreement. Right. So when we have our budget meeting on May 12th, that'll be one of the items that you can talk about whether or not you want to include in the in the next fiscal year, but last year it was included in the budget and that's the budget line item that oh, is oh, available. Oh, I understand, um, and on its face it looks wonderful, it really does. And so I read in the terms and conditions, looked at the exclusions, looked at how it gets paid out, and uh, I just it left me with questions on uh, is it being paid out and is this $30,000 uh, spent for you know, $100,000 in benefit to the citizens, wonderful, great, let's do it. Or is it $30,000 and no citizen got a benefit from it, but it just looks wonderful. So, and that, and that I... Sure, and I, I absolutely appreciate the questions. The other thing that's um, really special about mm -hmm. Bastrop is Scooter, between Scooter and Chief Rosales, yeah. be, They've, they've been called, they, they, they know what family it is, and they, they share that word when, they, um, you know, when they're on the helicopter. The people that are not on the helicopter, it's, hey, don't forget, and here's what's going on. So it's not something that they keep secret. So, um, yeah. Because it's hard, it's one of those things that if you advertise, if, unless you're planning on going and getting in a car accident this afternoon, you may not really pay attention right, or right, listen. Right, right. Yeah. And when you're totally stressed out, you may not remember that mm -hmm. it's available, but that's what first responders are for. Yeah, yeah and you're right, they, they do. I think between the two of them, you guys work to put it in our system. Um, so that it actually goes up to patient financial services yeah, that way. We try to do a lot of the, we try to do follow up with the, with them um, afterwards or even while we're on scene with the families, we explain to them because a lot of people do associate the helicopter with being a, a large expense. And so while we're there, we, we try to uh, comfort them and let them know. And, 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 and the reason we did this uh, a while back was to assist the first responders with kind of eliminating the the, the excuse for not using it as a, as a funding resource. And so we wanted to encourage the use of, because it is highly, highly vital for certain patients to get a, uh, to go on, this, on the helicopter. And that could be whether it's coming out of, uh, out of somebody's home, a crawl crash, or um, sometimes leaving Ally, uh, Ally ER, or one of the ERs here locally, and, and going straight to Austin where you get that quick primary care in, in, in a couple of minutes versus the hour drive to Austin during traffic. So, so that, that's why we, we, we implemented that was to assist with that, to eliminate that, that thought and that decision making of, oh, this is gonna cost that patient too much. No, it's, it, don't, don't even think of that. Consider what's the patient care and what is vital for that patient. Thank you, Chief, you convinced me. Uh, <laughs> Council, any other questions? Yes, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Well, first, I thank you for the program because I'm pretty proud of us bringing this program in the last couple of years. Um, the one thing I did ask, and I think you answered a lot of it during um, John's questions, mm -hmm. that whenever they do happen to slip through, like everything does, I was wondering if you maybe send a notice with that that say, hey, if you are, you know, something on it or... We don't typically send anything like that, um, but... Um it, it's typically just this, the statement of benefits. Now, one thing that is coming, I don't think we've talked about this even, so peace of surprise. Uh, <laughs> uh, one thing that we are looking at, at uh, doing, uh, and it's not been done in the past, we really didn't have the, uh, the capacity to do it within our department, but at the first of the year, um, we began sending out test letters and postcards to let people know that they were covered. So that began happening actually in New Mexico. Um, that has been well received. Um, people aren't just throwing them away when they get them. So, and that's one of the things we wanted to, to know, is it, is it gonna be a, a good uh, attention getter? So I hope by the end of the second quarter, we will have those go out to the rest of our other county and citywides. Um, so that's something that we'll, it would be either a letter or a postcard which actually says you're the city of Bastrop has purchased this membership for you um, and gives some contact information so it was one of the things that we realized was kind of a gap so it it's 
our way of getting that information out there. Right. It, it'll also have the decreased rate for the upgrade on there as well, if folks want to take advantage of that. And a lot of people don't know about that either, so. I just thought if you were already mailing it to a bash shop zip code, then most likely they're gonna be covered. So if that was, you know. Yeah, actually the, you guys have got quite a few that are not in yeah. the incorporated oh, not. Well, I helpful. know, but I didn't know if this was, I didn't know if the county also bought this coverage, so I wasn't sure. So, but no. I'm just saying, I just thought maybe. Yeah, and so that, and that happens least. too. Every now and then we get someone that's not in the incorporated city limits that, that, that does think they're possibly covered, but we're super careful in that verbiage when we say the incorporated city limits or the incorporated city of Bastrop. So um, hopefully we're getting the, the message out there properly. So, and just one so more question because you, you, you mentioned renters. If they're a renter, they're still a resident, correct? Right, they okay. are still just a resident. Sure. And like I said, a lot of times that might not be caught in that initial pass. And so, we just ask that they bring the information back to us and say, Hey, I'm a member of the City of Bastrop program. You said like a utility bill, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then we just ask just that they provide sure that was yeah, clarified since you, since, you, that, since you separated the words, I want to make sure they knew that, yeah. Yeah. And before I say motion to approve, you wanted to say something, yeah. Andres? Well, I'm, oh, I'm just sorry. Say we have the opportunity to also. We we did this when we first did this um, back in 2018. I think the first one was 20, yeah, 1920. 20. Um, that we we did a blast and and we put flyers in the um, the mailers for the billing and utility building those kind of things. We can do that again, and we put it on our website and we try to get it out as much as we can to let everybody know that. Hey, you can utilize this. It, and it's just right when you're, you're not really thinking about what you mail me until I'm looking for it. Correct. Now, Correct. Now yeah, absolutely. Well, well, and then, you know, no good deed goes unpunished because we did, with the first year we did it, we literally had people calling and asking the when helicopter. they could get their free helicopter ride. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. I move to approve that. <laughs> I have a motion to approve from Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Second. And a second from Council Member Kirkland. Is there any further discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, one minor thing. Um, I really would like the details on the finances, even if you've already sent it, just so we can review it in our budget workshop. I guess we need to be clear on what you're looking for. So yeah. she's stated that um, 46 people have utilized it. Those are 46 confirmed members of the program that have utilized it. So do you, do you want how much a helicopter ride costs? Uh, or? No, I, I guess I'm... I want to distinguish between 46 people that were taken to the hospital. I mean, is that the entire number for the year that were city residents? Probably or is, so. That's what right, she's right. giving us. But so, eligible. Yeah, and, and, eligible. They, and they, they didn't pay out money because they didn't get a bill. Right. So the, the resident didn't get a bill. Uh, the insurance company got a bill. There was, did you pay your deductible or not? The, the insurance company paid that. There's still the whole transaction associated with uh, your insurance company uh, compensating them that you often get stuck in the middle of and um, and and so you just I just it's not clear to me uh, if it did pay out on all of those I mean everyone got a ride but you know if the person's insurance company paid for it then then they they didn't pay out on that one so I, I just if sort they're of, eligible for the program you wouldn't bill their insurance no no the, no, the terms and conditions say so, that the insurance companies right. pay for right. so we yeah. do bill their insurance right. when insurance is available or we will bill, bill a third party um, provider so if it's an auto accident it's the other person's fault right we'll, we will bill insurance mm -hmm. what is not uh, the the patient however is not due they are they do not owe any responsibility after that right so we accept the payment the insurance as payment in full mm -hmm. if you are uninsured we take the whole thing right, right. so it says, it's yeah. no cost to the patient copays and deductibles as well as co-insurance for those that are on Medicare mm -hmm. are also covered under the program so they are not responsible for a copay or a deductible or co-insurance uh, with the membership program basically we bill insurance we take that as payment in full Nothing more is due by the patient. Nothing more is due by anyone. And so the, the number that you provided, for the, was it 47? Uh, that's each one of those persons received some financial benefit while yes. using it? Okay. Yeah, those were membership, what I call membership eligible. So basically they're covered under the program and they were flown from, from Bastrop County. I yep. just want to be careful because when you start getting into people's insurance bill, that gets yeah. HIPAA quickly, and we don't have access to that yeah, information. Oh, of course I can't not. share yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I, I can't yeah. provide that information. Yeah, I understand. Right. But it, it, I, I'm just trying to 
figure out what the benefit is other than the, the completely impressive thing that it sounds like, but there's a financial transaction that's taking place in the background and I'm trying to assess the size of it compared to the price that we're paying and determine, you know, is the ROI uh, great or not? And that's, that's where I'm, my questions are. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I seconded I a, it. I have yeah. a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? Yes. Councilmember Kirkland? Yes. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Thank you, Council. All right, unless there's somebody else waving at me, I really think I've covered, oh, I bet there's somebody here for Wildwood in there. Yep, okay. We're gonna do one thing before that because I got a whole bunch of people and some of them are volunteers and you guys are getting paid by somebody. So um, I'm gonna let my volunteers go first. And that is we're going back to item 6A, receive a presentation of Visit Bastrop Mid-Year Report. Item 6A. Ms. Smith. Good evening. Very glad I'm not competing with that thunderstorm. <laughs> So uh, this is our mid-year report. Uh, we report mid-year and then we report again at the end of the fiscal year. Basically, this report is going to review what we told you we were gonna do with the hot funds and how, where we are to date to those goals of those hot funds. Um, first, I'd like to have a couple of new introductions and thank you to my board members that are here tonight and the staff that's here tonight. Um, we have a, uh, Megan Garcia is our new marketing manager. You may know her from Neighbors. She comes from a familiar face from Neighbors. Um, I also want to um, uh, compliment Cherry K. Abel. She received her TDM, which is the Texas Destination Marketer Certification. That focuses on education and training in the tourism and hospitality industry. And um, at the time that we submitted this report to now, I just found out that I just received my certified tourism executive. Yay. So credentials, and that's a three-year industry program that's a curriculum of tourism leadership and management. So we have some fun things to talk about. Okay, leisure traveler. This is what we said we were gonna be working on at the last uh, joint council meeting. I'm not gonna go through every single one, um, but these are the things that are attached to our strategic plan in terms of these are the specifics about what we actually are going to do. For the local community, again, these are some things that we highlighted. It's part of our strategic plan. Um, collaboration, partnerships, and programs provide stability while achieving our shared goals and also pushing our mission forward. Um, so in the community is a, a very large asset to us as part of our program. How do we measure success? So there's many different ways that we measure success and it's not just heads and beds, it's also website metrics, social metrics, number of leads generated, um, convention center sales, our economic impact, how many visitor guides do we distribute? So it's not just all about heads and beds. And so these are the different ways that we use to measure our successes. Marketing highlights, so PR pitches, media alerts. PR pitches are at 42% to goal at the six month point. This is through March 31st data. Uh, media alerts and press releases, which are really kind of out of our control because that's just stuff that's going on. And that's at 33% of what we anticipated as a goal. Paid search is at 46%. Um, basically, we're halfway to our goal and we haven't even really gotten to the best time of the year and the good stuff yet, so um, we haven't reached our peak season. Uh, so let's see, where else? Overall traffic, 42% of goal, and organic traffic is 42% of goal. Our repeat visitors are 45% of goal, and blog traffic, 44%. And we ordered, oh, what was it, 25,000 visitor guides, and we've already distributed 20. So we may have a reorder going on, which is great. Our Facebook engagements um, have really um, done much better this year than we did actually last year. Um, we're at 62% of our goal for this year. Instagram followers are at 28%. A little low on that side, we recognize that, and we're gonna work towards meeting those, um, trying to meet that goal by the end of the year. Um, newsletter opt-ins, 
uh, which is great. A lot of people are we're at 69 percent. Our newsletter rate is continuing to beat the industry standard. So all thing, all things good there. And Cherry K is knocking it out of the park. We have 50% um, of our goal right at the six month point on definites. That's the number of actual contracts signed for business. Uh, and 40% of our room night goal. And she's 75% to the convention center goal, which is booking just convention center, which usually they have hotels too. So the hot fund, um, as you know, we um, council awarded us um, $50,000 in addition to the hot fund, hot event fund, and uh, where we are today. So that brought us to 125482 We had a little carryover from the year before. Um, we've awarded 82000 and when in pending applications right now is 14800 So we're cruising right along. Our focus area areas continue to um, watch and market the ECABs. We, um, Sylvie and I are working on a welcome and relocation guide as part of a DEI initiative. And um, we've been graciously been um, working with parks and we're going to be doing some park signage down at Fisherman's Park down by the river. Top 10 things about the river you should know and um, you know, making sure you clean your boat when you leave and all that kind of stuff. Our budget is, um, so this was the budget we presented to you last calendar year, last year for this fiscal year. We um, had our true up at the last council meeting. So the time, by the time this report went through, we had our board meeting on Thursday. The new budget was accepted by the board on Thursday. So I didn't have those numbers in there because this not, hadn't been accepted by the board at that time. Um, I will tell you that um, we've you know, put, it in, put it where it should be, which is in marketing. And you'll also notice at the end of next fiscal year, I'll show you that we've put a little bit more into professional development. I just recently came back from a CEO summit. And I have to tell you that it's just, an incredible experience to be sitting in that room and with other fellow CEOs across the United States and internationally and they're like, and I go, oh yeah, we do that. Yeah, we do that. Bastrop does that. Yeah, we know how to do that. I can show you how to do that. So it's really important that the staff get an opportunity to hear those great feedbacks that we have. And um, it's just, a, so we're able to do that this year, which I'm very grateful for. So that's that. Um, let's see some considerations I've been talking with our city manager and we've um, she's in agreement with these that we wanted just to change a couple things it's just about the dates of reporting um, we will provide the city upon request reporting data quarterly instead of us actually coming to you quarterly and we will present to City Council a mid-year report in April of each year so that's what this is and then the other consideration that we would ask is that we change our annual presentation to be um, from August to October. And that would be for section one and section two. They kind of say the same thing. So um, the reason for that is, is that we'll actually be able to give you full data through the year because when we report in August, we're only reporting up until July. So we can give you full data for the full year, um, brand new budget, everything will be ready to rock and roll. So um, uh, our city manager's in agreement with that. So we're just asking to make that change to our agreement. Excellent, okay, so this is, um, I know Mr. Bork was that we can take action on any item that's posted, but um, I really think maybe the con what contract comes back with the, uh, adjustments in it or what's the cleanest way to do it from your perspective the, the cleanest way is obviously mayor as you suggested for the contract to come back with that filled out if you want to move forward on it you can authorize the city manager to sign it with those particular terms as you agreed on the, the other thing that I want everyone to be aware of um, is with the good news of House Bill 3324 moving forward if that's approved we may need to change some of the language to be clear of what goes to the qualified hotel project and what's in the bucket and what's not in the bucket so that there's clarity with visit Bastrop because I know we'll have legal requirements of how we can spend those state dollars but now that those state dollars will be coming back to us we may need to clean up some language with it within this contract but we can do that 
secondarily. So what I hear you saying is if council was so inclined, they could make, a, even though this isn't on for individual consideration, we could have a motion to direct the city manager to execute a contract with the um, amendments that Ms. Smith has defined. Yes, Mayor, that is an option. Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Yes, ma'am, I don't have a problem with any of the suggestions that you have, but I would like for the contract to come back for approval. You'd rather just see it come back on right. and have a only, contract item and then we're done? Right, only because that tax thing that hopefully we cross our fingers. I'd like to see it cleaned up at that point, Oh, maybe too. we can do it all at once. All at one time. But okay. I don't have, I just want her to know I didn't have a problem with this. I just wanted to see it all Thank you. together. Okay. And great job. Thank you. Uh, looks like, uh, Councilmember Plunkett? Yeah, I just want to, I mean, there's nothing in there I don't believe that's going to cause any problems for you in the meantime, mm -hmm. right? So No, no, sir. Just excellent job. Thank you. You and your entire staff. And um, you want to have your board and your staff stand up so we can well, give them a first of all, we have one other thing. Oh, oh it's not in your packet. Oh. Um, oh. So um, lastly, um, realizing that this will be the last time that Visit Bastrop will be presenting our report. I know it. <laughs> to Mayor Schrader and Mayor Pro Tem Rogers, we want to take this opportunity to express our sincere thank you to you both. Visit Bastrop thanks you for your support and dedication to the tourism industry here in Bastrop. I googled how to say thank you in proper business terms, proper etiquette earlier today, no matter what popped up, it didn't seem to be the right words. What I did realize was that I needed to say something from the heart of Visit Bastrop. Number one, we are grateful to you, we are indebted to you, we are obliged, we are thankful, we are appreciative of your support, we simply cannot thank you enough. Lastly, we thank you for your wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to think and act using knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. But it transforms into something beautifully when it's shared. Your positive impact on this city and visit Bastrop will be felt for a long time to come. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice. I have a little something for you. Oh. Wow. Alan said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down. We have a limit on the value of things we're able to accept. That's why we're both like, Alan, are we okay? And he's like, yes, they didn't give you a, a suitcase full of cash. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, all right. Thank you guys Thank you. very, very much. And um, Mr. Job, uh, it would be great if the contract can be on the next agenda. And what we may do is um, have a conversation with our folks that are tracking 3324 and to Councilmember Plunkett's point that if it doesn't get revised for a couple months and it doesn't matter, it's it'll be more efficient if we just do it once. So yeah. we'll let you guys work on that. Sure. And, and Mayor, we had some conversation about this last year. Susan and I talked about this before. It's, it's coincidence with the the uh, strategic calendar for the for the budget. Yeah, it, it yeah. does. It does make sense. And I know when we first started, we, they were doing monthly and mo and nothing. It doesn't change a lot in a month, and that was a lot of work. So, um, okay, uh, Ms. Waldron's going to be here for a long time anyway. So I'm going to move to 9F. She has to stay till the end. So we're going to move to 9F. Sorry, Colin. Hold a public hearing and consider action to approve resolution number R2023-67 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, consenting to the creation and division of Wildwood Municipal Utility District, providing for an open meetings clause, and providing for an effective date. Mr. Job. And first off, Wildwood Municipal Utility District is also known as? Silverleaf. Silverleaf. 
it's a little confusing. But uh, just to give you a quick history, um, yeah, this, and you can see the location, to give you some, some points of reference, maybe this will help. This is the far western edge of the city limits. This is actually Wildwood. Just to the west there is the, the uh, Travis County line. Um, and then if you're familiar with the Bernal Loop, that's basically across the street, across the north side of 71. Um, this municipal utility district was created by the legislature. Um, they currently have a development agreement with the county already. Um, what they need is the consent from the city to move forward. Um, we've asked them, we just made one request and that was to make sure that there was good connectivity with the mud to the uh, west, which will be Garfield mud, who will be coming for consent here in the next month or so as well. Um, they've all agreed to that. We have a letter stating that. Um, and with that, we'll um, actually, just to give you a breakdown of what this may look like. I know it's sideways, but um, here is your, your point at Highway 71 again. And this is the shape of the property. And what you'll see here is actually, uh, they're actually donating an elementary school site as well. Um, and then just one more that's right side up to make you feel a little better. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> had to crop that a bit, but the, uh, they do have a water service agreement with Aqua Water. Um, they do plan on an on-site wastewater treatment plant. It's approved by the TCEQ. Um, and they've agreed to provide that connectivity and you can see future connection points somewhere to the south end of that for um, connectivity that will tell way into Travis County. And we have Mr. and I'm probably gonna butcher this, but Mr. Bob Wunsch here, um, if you have any extra questions and with that I'll stop talking, I'll let you make a motion if you're- So ready. Mr. Joe, the reality is um, TCEQ is what brought them here, correct? That's correct, yes ma'am. You can, you can either come to a city for consent and go to the TCEQ or you can go to the legislature for consent. I'm sorry, to be formed. To be formed. Um, and then you still have to get consent, which is why they're, they're here. They took the legislative route. Okay. And um, it was also important to do this today because? Um, they need to hold an election here very soon, and they don't want to go into May or they have to start over. Yeah. So, so we're trying to be um, cognizant of the time constraints that they're under. And according to my uh, not accurate ruler that I used, it's about two miles east of the Travis County line. Mm -hmm. So that, and just to give everybody a, another bit. So when you leave and it says it's 21 miles to Bastrop, I, I, that's not at the county line. So, but if you get right really around Carts is right at the county line. It is. So two yes. miles east of the Carts um, center is, is about where this property is. So mm -hmm. it's far, far away. Right. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. I'm just curious out of all these squares, how many, about how many houses are they looking, or how many, just curiosity, doesn't make a difference, just, oh, just thank you. I just was, I didn't want to have the camera. I need you to squares. speak into the mic or the people at home will Bob say. Wunsch, I'm the developer, I'm the one, don't, doesn't get paid. Thank you. Until the very end. Um, uh, but, but basically we're doing large lots, which is about 2.2 uh, units a acre, a lot of open space. We have 105 feet of elevation change, got eight ponds. We're preserving all those. We're actually building some walls to preserve all those open spaces. Uh, give you a little background on me. I did Berry Creek and River Chase and Shell in Georgetown. I did Avery Ranch. I also built Texas A&M Medical School uh, in Round Rock. So I've been around a long time, trying to always do the right thing. And um, So this is the first piece of property I've ever bought in my life. So I've bought a lot of property. So it's going to be very, very nice. And we donated the school, we all the utilities to it. So if it's a net site, they don't have to do anything except build a building. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Council Member Kirkland. Uh, Mr. Tobe, question. Um, we've had a discussion in prior council meetings about fire code and two entrances and exits into things. And you also talked about connectivity, which presumably was for that. But can you tell me where the two entrance and two exits kind of come into this thing? Um, I don't know that I can. Is the chief still here? <laughs> yeah, no. he walked out. So there is a number and limit of, of the amount. He's the expert on this. But uh, essentially, um, They'll, they'll check this and that type of thing through the county, through the ESD there okay. um, as well. We, we do look at it. Uh, Andreas approved the overall site plan. Okay. But it, again, it's a concept. So that'll come in and be done with the county through a development agreement um, that they had already executed months Well, ago. and some of the connections that show the, the street dead ending, it'll connect when that develops and that becomes additional. There, right. There's only so much they can do because right. they're, they'll be limited on the distance between entrances by Absolutely. the state. You have to come to the mic. So what he's talking about is there's a boulevard that runs through the entire thing that they could 
contra flow if needed, and it's two ways in and out. Gotcha. For the thousand homes that'll be in there. Okay. And, and, we, and we've agreed. We've also agreed that if uh, we can't get out either side, no landlord. We've worked for two years. And you look at the development group of the county. We said we use best efforts. We tried for a couple of years. And so what we agreed to do is, if a public entity acquires the right of way for a secondary access, we will pay the engineer and build it immediately, which would basically get us out to Tucker Hill. Right, which would be a lot safer for the residents and the elementary school kids. Absolutely, so especially when that been, over once that overpass gets done, it'll really be nice. Yeah, but what, what Textile wants us to do right now is just they want to shut down an entrance and people go across. It's just right. You know, this that would be a great thing. Excellent, excellent. Council, any more questions? I need to have a public hearing before we have a motion. <laughs> Was that what you're going? to Okay, so I'm officially opening the public hearing. Madam Secretary, do we have anyone signed up to speak at the public hearing? No, Mayor. I'm officially closing the public hearing and happy to entertain a motion. Councilmember Plunkett? Move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Councilmember Plunkett. Second. And a second from Councilmember Crouch. Is there any further questions? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? Yes. Councilmember Kirkland? Yes. Thank you, Council. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Tr sorry, we tr tried to get you out here. Not, not too, too bad. We just made you miss the hail and the rain, so you'll be safer getting home. All right. Um, I think most of the items are uh, Ms. Waldron's and one for Chief, and sh they both have to stay. So let's just go back to page two, item 6B, and we'll work through the rest of the agenda in order. Item 6B, receive presentation on the unaudited monthly financial report and the investment report for the period ending March 31st, 2023. Ms. Waldron. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So, um Report is strong. General fund exceeding forecast 8.3%. Sales tax is still hovering around 9% over forecast. Uh, development fees are still about 38% over forecast. On the electric, um, we saw a shortage from forecast last month. That gap has been closed, um, but we're still at about 3.7%. All other funds are positive to forecast and all funds are positive to forecast on the expense side. Um, quarterly, we bring to you the investment report, so we just went ahead, instead of making it another item, we're tacking it on to this item here. So um, you'll see that book value between last quarter and this quarter has gone up significantly. We did sell um, a good amount of bonds in January, and so that um, is part of that we are seeing investments right now uh, around 4.7. We were up to 5%, a little over 5%, um, but we're just starting to catch up from where we were at 0.5. So our uh, rate of return against the amount of money we have is still low, but it's starting to edge up as those um, higher rate of return start becoming bigger and the, the smaller ones, we're closing that gap. If you have any questions for me, I'm happy to entertain. Council, any questions for Ms. Waldron? Okay. Council Member Kirkland. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, our city manager has discussed uh, potentially doing some different things with investments. Uh, is You just raise your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I have spoken with her about it, yes. Okay. Um, uh, and, and I was just curious if what we might see different uh, in the future in that regard. Um, I'm just looking at seeing if we want to use a third party to help with investing. Um, they have a lot more at their disposal than I do. I have a couple of brokers and I have some pooled accounts. Yeah. Um, so that's really been the discussion. Okay. The biggest thing is making sure um, it, it's complicated with so many huge, well, with the two big plants going on and the big bonds that we're selling and, and sell them at a good time, but keep them invested and, and yeah. be able to make all your payments. So it's, it's more complicated than usual yes. while, during these big CIP projects. Council, any other questions for Ms. Waldron? All right, thank you. We're done with 6B. We've taken care of 7. We've taken care of 8. We've taken care of 9A. 
That puts us on the top of page five, which we would also like to refer to as the last page of any items. And we are on item 9B, consider action to approve resolution number R 2023-50 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, approving the financial procedures manual, which is attached to Exhibit A, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Ms. Waldron. Yes. So. Um, we are bringing this back after uh, bringing it forward to you a couple of meetings ago um, and talking about some additions and some changes. I wanted to point out that I went back and looked at all the procedures documents. We have quite a few procedures documents. They were all independent, um, especially those like accounts payable, payroll, purchasing, those were always given to those administrative staff that did that work out of the different departments. We are decentralized in our purchasing. Um, so I do have some of those listed on there. I know I put them on the staff report. Um, the policy has been re reviewed by our attorney and they have uh, responded and I have incorporated um, the few suggestions that they have made. Um, I've also uh, worked with Council Member Kirkland, um, and we have um, settled on the language that, that is in the, the policy or the procedures. On um, the cover letter, <laughs> is that specifically what you're talking about? That and just a few and other, other things. Okay. Yeah, but it's, they're all marked in there, um, edited red or blue. Um, so we wanted to emphasize the cybersecurity that we are required to have, but to, to actually put it in the procedure and, and note it. Um, and also the EFT vendor verification um, and the employee acknowledgement. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for ver for clarifying that you had policies. They just weren't in a book because that they just was, weren't nice, pretty. Yeah, and, and that's what and and I read back through this, but can you tell me what policy you actually what policy is new that we've implemented? We've just added the language to the policy. But what None of those that? policies are new. So, no, I'm asking, what, where is the language that's, that's worded differently to protect us from the situation? Everything that was redlined on the, the report that got. We didn't get a red line. Yeah, I don't have any red lines. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was looking for. The I one I read edited it. was redlined. <laughs> so it was redlined at the last Anybody meeting. Anybody else see red lines? My copy doesn't have any red lines in the packet. In your head? <laughs> I do think we have an issue with when we submit it through the Muni code, it drops the formatting. Um, we'll work on that. Um, mainly, the language was um, regarding the procedures for verifying the vendors when they um, sign up for electronic funds transfer and how we do that, which is, a th so like if we receive it by email, we will call and verify. Um, we will get online, we'll find the company's number. I mean, we will go add it in a different way than we received it to make sure that we are actually getting to the company and verifying the information from um, an appropriate person. So that language was added in there and the form was created. That was not, um, before we didn't have the form, they were just writing it on the application. So now we have the form. Um, and so all the forms get verified by me before we file them away so that I can verify that yes, the verification was actually completed. I don't have a problem with it moving forward, but um, City Manager Trey, <laughs> can you send us the red line versions just so I can read through it? Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll put it into your, we'll email it out or put it in the Dropbox, either one. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Yeah. You said Dropbox, but you mean OneDrive. Yes, okay. it used to be Dropbox, sorry. Yes, it, it used to be, that's right. Council, does anybody else have any questions? Because I had a, a couple. Do you have any questions, Mr. Kirkland? All right. So um, one of the things, and I'm trying to keep straight in my mind that there's, this is financial procedures, so I tried to not right. let things um, overlap. But I saw some things had audits and reconciliation and, and mm -hmm. things some things did not. And one of the things that jumped out at me is it looked like, um, the utility office, the library, a lot of pe people send things to utility services and it's all reconciled. Um, I'm particularly looking, talking about deposits. It's, I'm on page nine and page 338 of the packet. But I noticed the municipal court, which is in a completely different place, it says the receipt is scanned in with the deposit register and that's the end of it. But the other people who make a deposit and 
the receipt is scanned in, they end up forwarding things to finance. Mm -hmm. Does that happen and you just didn't write it in the procedures or is the municipal court its whole different bucket? Well, library also makes their own deposits, but um, everything gets reconciled through the bank reconciliation. Well, but the library, so. that's what brought on the question because the library says the packet register and backup are forwarded to finance for review and record retention. That's, yeah, that's item number four, but that's not listed under yeah, municipal at, court. We get everything because we, we reconcile their deposits. We reconcile what we get from the third party for ACH deposits for the credit cards. We reconcile all that back to their reports. So they're putting all of that in Laserfish for us to reconcile. So I just need to add some language there. Okay, so maybe um, municipal court needed the same number four that the library had? Yeah, because they're all reconciled. Okay. Um, okay, and then on the change orders, I didn't see an, an audit of the change orders. As, so there's a, um, it talks about just change orders in general, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, have the um, of, of an audit of those change orders of who signed off on those change orders and and do that do they match the contract and is that con you know mm -hmm. are the contract amounts there is it mm -hmm. implied and if I was a finance person it would be more obvious to me or I mean yes because some and I guess that's we an overall question <laughs> is how come some things have audit as a part of because the items that are listed in the outline, many of them have purpose, scope, policy, procedure. Some of them have audit, mm -hmm. and many of them don't have audit. So what's, what requires it to have an audit as a part of the section? Um, this was a first go around and trying to get all these manuals put together. Because I would think deposits would be something that so, would, and, so like a reconciliation <laughs> is basically an audit. Okay. We reconcile every single bank account every single month without saying it, that is an audit. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and we audit everything that comes through, every invoice that comes through. Does it have the supporting signatures? Does it have the proper backup? Everything gets audited. I guess it's just more about like, when we've put it down in writing or when we haven't, but everything gets audited. Okay, well, it just stood out to me that sometimes it was in the section and some sections it was not in, and mm -hmm. I, I would think the same thing, like well, I would think yeah. we would be auditing And this everything. is a working document, so like I realize as soon as we kind of finish this first draft, I need to add a section on insurance, I need to, so it's a working, I don't know, it's never finished. It's a working document that will continue to be um, added to and improved. Okay, and then my last question is on open purchase orders because we've had an, we had an issue in the past where um, there was, I, I don't know if it was one purchase order that was bought against twice or if there was two purchase orders for the same thing, but whatever Neither. it was, um, one of the things you told me was, well, now we're numbering the, the capital purchases in Fleet, the budget, yes. but I didn't find any of that in this. It's actually in the purchasing policy itself. In the purchasing policy. So the financial procedures say follow the purchasing policy and that's where it's... Yeah, it's actually in the purchasing policy. Okay. I, what, all I'm trying to do, and I think, um, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I think this may have been where Mayor Pro Tem Rogers was going as well, is that we've had two or three issues and mm -hmm. we're trying to make sure Absolutely. that when we're gone, when you're gone, new people come in, that we have things in place yeah. and we're all extremely confident because we've been confident and then we have another mm -hmm. little bump. So we're just right. trying to make sure that it's that it's down. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? And I'm sorry if this is in there, but usually like on our policies or something, we say that it gets reviewed once a year or it every does. two it's years. Every does two it does, every two Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure it was in there. I was trying to find it to make sure it was, but thank yeah. you. So, Madam Secretary, will that be on the agenda? Was that something that you guys will put in the master agenda so it'll pop up? Because two years is a long time. So what will trigger that to be on a council agenda for a review? I mean, I'll put it with the rest of our policies. Because right. okay. we're bringing policies every single year for y'all to review. This is a procedure, yeah, not a policy. Yeah, and we've been caught up in that before. So it's something that they will review, not council, correct? Typically, I that think, is true. Yeah, yes. but I may bring it back to council. I, just I have a feeling, sure I especially clear. if there's any changes to it. So, Mr. Job, you guys can work out however you're going to do that. But um, what we don't want to happen is we're going to review it every two years. 
two years is a really long time. It doesn't happen. And then we wonder why and we're in sure. violation. And I know you mm -hmm. don't want to be in violation of any of that stuff either. I already have some notes to, to put it on the master agenda. Thank you very much, Mr. Job. All right, council, any other questions for Ms. Waldron? I move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Second. And a second from council member Kirkland. Is there any further discussion? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Yes. Council member Kirkland. Yes. Council member Plunkett. Yes. Council member Kraft. Yes. Thank you, council. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Waldron. And I know you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Item 9C, consider action to approve resolution number R2023-64, the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, supporting the City of Bastrop's application to the Texas Department of Transportation's 2023 Transportation Alternatives Set Aside Call projects requesting a grant in the amount of $12,232,513 to rehabilitate the old iron bridge, authorizing the city manager to execute all necessary documents, providing for a repealing clause and establishing an effective date. Ms. Waldron. Yes, so this is actually a resolution that's required for the full application that um, we're working on. Um, the project is the old iron bridge. It's phase two full application request. The the application is June 5th. Um, as stated, funds requested are 12 million. The city matches 20% of that. It can be a combination of cash or transportation credits, which we don't have. I don't have a number for that. Um, at we this, do have credits. She just doesn't know the number. The yes, number I mean, is we, not we zero. We have credits. We just don't know how much that will reduce the cash match amount. Um, and so that is what this is for. Council, this is one that I almost put on consent, but I really want everyone to know mm -hmm. that we are, we've are we made it to the second round, uh, sold the bond to have the match available. Mm -hmm. We'll use all the transportation alternative dollars that we can get to. So, um, the, And the question may be, how'd you come up with the $12,232,513? And Mr. Job, that was the best number we had that we can back up with an engineering report, which is what the, they will want to be looking at is mm -hmm. how did you get that number? Yeah, so, I think it was 15 something and the 12 is the But 80%. we're not trying to imply that we have done complete drawings and put it out for bid and that's exactly what the number is going to be. But you have mm -hmm. to write something on the grant so yep. you use the information that you have to get there. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Yes, ma'am. I see when you when it's due, do we have an idea of when they're when they'll look October at it? October is what we've been told. October when they'll let us know Four. that when we win in October. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Crouch. I I was wanting to see if did we received a response back for why we weren't successful the first application, right? On the raise grant, we did. We did. Yeah. And then they, I'm assuming they corrected all that on this. On this round so, some of it wasn't a correction some of it was just that Additional just the criteria yeah well the raise grant had specific criteria and so sometimes you line up with that and sometimes other people line up better so okay thank you council member plunkett move to approve i have resolution a motion 2023 64. thank you i have a motion to approve from council member plunkett second I have a second from Council Member Kirkland. Council, you're voting on resolution 2023-64. Sorry for walking on you, Council Member Plunkett. Any other questions? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor and Council, before I do so, I just wanted to let you know that the um, financial procedure manual has been placed on master agenda for 2025. Wow. Thank you. Yay. Y'all have fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Plunkett. Yes. Council Member Kirkland? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? Yes. Council Member Crouch? Yes. Thank you, Council. Motion passes unanimously. That's a pretty quick turnaround there, Ms. Ms. Franklin. We didn't even make it to the list. All right, we're moving on to item 9D. This is, this is an important one. Consider action to approve the first reading of ordinance number 2023-14 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, authorizing pro rata reimbursement and cost sharing agreements for water and wastewater infrastructure and move to include on the May 9th, 2023 consent agenda for second reading. I seriously doubt that we're gonna go straight to consent agenda. Mr. Borquez. You certainly have the option to do so, Mayor, or you can postpone another week before you adopt on first reading. Uh, what we have, Mayor and Council, is a very first draft, you'll see it labeled Draft A, of an ordinance. 
that provides authority for the city to enter into pro rata cost sharing agreements. In effect, what this will do is this process that we'll have in place can be applied to any developer that comes along. It's not targeted or specific to any particular property or project. And if they are required to extend water lines or wastewater lines to serve their project, and they arrange with the city to oversize those lines, to make them larger than is what is needed to serve that particular property, then with this ordinance in place, we can later enter into agreements that as other property owners tie onto those lines later, those latecomers will pay their proportional share of the oversizing, the difference, the delta between what the original property necessitated and what the capacity of the line will be. Uh, this is a, a common practice that happens in other municipalities. So we quickly put together a rough draft. Uh, in fairness, city staff has not had the opportunity to review this before it went into the packet. We were just eager to get it in front of you since you'd heard about this, but you hadn't seen anything yet. Uh, as of today, I have received some suggested comments and edits on the document. So you have the ability to discuss it. I think ACM Job might have some comments he may want to share. You could approve it on first reading. We make edits and bring back a new draft at your next meeting, or you can put off first reading until a subsequent time when you're more comfortable with the draft. Council, one of the reasons that we went ahead and put it on the agenda and had it in the packet, even though um, it wasn't a real flushed out and had gone back and forth, is because I think it is extremely important that we talk about this, the need for this. It, there's, I've never, all cities have this. Um, when, when we didn't have any capacity and we didn't have much growth going on, there wasn't really a need for it. But with the water treatment plant and the wastewater treatment plant, it's been discussed for a while. And I thought it was really important to talk about it and not think of a particular project because that'll tend to make your questions go towards that particular road, that particular project. And it is really intended to be a strategic map for the future. It's a way that the developer knows that um, the money that they're putting forward as other people are tying on, that other people are paying their fair share and that the total, the cost of the oversize is not on the burden of the existing tax and ratepayers that are utilizing the systems. And it also allows for um, really for the fair pay all the, all the way around. Um, I, if we approve, and we've done this before and it's totally y'all's choice, but if we do do the first reading of the ordinance and approve it in some form or fashion tonight, it, will, um, it just makes it that much sooner that we'll have something in place as we have other projects that, because um, we all know of two or three projects that are, are wanting to utilize this. One of the main things that we, the reason that we want to do this, it's the most cost effective way to get the capacity in place so you are not, even though the public thinks we do this all the time, constantly tearing up the road because you're having to place another line. There is never a cheaper time to put the capacity in place than when you have dug the ditch and you're laying the pipe. The, the effort that it takes to put in a 12 inch pipe as opposed to a 16 inch pipe is literally the cost of the pipe. It's the, the um, backhoe, I'm, yeah. The backhoe is going to use the same bucket. The, you're going to use the same number of guys. The bedding is going to be the same. It is absolutely the cheapest way to get the capacity in place. And the cheaper it is to get the capacity in place, the more cost effective it is for the developers, the latecomers, and ultimately the ratepayers. Mr. Job. Yes, ma'am. Um, we, we do currently do something similar to this, but you're absolutely right. It's something that we budget annually. And it's with the amount of development that's going on, it is not near enough to keep up. Um, and this will actually um, be very helpful. Um, it also, after briefly reading through it, um, it does have some specific utility language in there. Uh, I've spoken to Mr. Porquez and suggested that uh, perhaps we, we tie it back to the construction standards manual that requires you to tie into a mantle, that requires you to tie into have a flush valve at the end of the line, all that kind of stuff, um, so that they're all following the same construction standard. Some of that can be adjusted and amended based on the um, recommendation of the city engineer. For example, we do work in the colony um, and we know that they're going to put in, I'm just going to pull a number 1D and it's going to be right next to 1C. Um, 
you know, sometimes the line is short and we allow a them cap. to not go to the manhole, but to put a cap, have a hundred foot and then come back and tie in and save the extra cost of a $5,000 manhole. So, but that decision is usually made at a staff level and at the city engineer knowing that it will be remedied very quickly. So I think what we have here is, is a good start. Council, we're specifically referencing page 376 of the packet. It's item number three. I had a conversation with Mr. Job and Mr. Borquez both. Um, there's, there's specific discussion about uh, terminating the water line at a fire plug, and I went to um, Trey and said, don't you want wastewater to terminate at a manhole or a lift station? Or, and so we, and, and, or as otherwise approved, you know, we, there's, there's just a little bit of, of cleanup language that I think we can tighten some things up, but the gist of being able to, that the city declares the oversize to get it in, in a cost effective manner and to have a way to recoup the cost is really the essence of the ordinance. Council member Plunkett. Yeah, I'm just I'm just really excited that we're finally here at this point. Um, for so long, our development um, policies have require have forced developers into the position to to say, you know, I don't want to be first, you know, because if you're first, that means you pay for it all, and everybody else benefits from what you did. This makes the developers. It, it, it levels the field, and I think it's super important that we get this done as quickly as possible, and I'm happy with whatever details y'all want to <laughs> wanna work out, but I'm just, I'm just really, yeah, really happy to, to, that we're finally, again, finally here. Thank you, Councilmember Plunkett. Councilmember Crouch? I I agree with Council Member Plunkett. I think it's a, a very good tool um, to allow people to go first and get reimbursed for that. It's, it's also a good tool to uh, help our development go faster so we're not waiting on the city to uh, put some infrastructure in. A developer can do that with, with an agreement. So it, it's, uh, I think it's a win-win. I, I, I'm glad to, uh, to see us doing this and let give the developer an opportunity to recoup some costs if things get added on downstream from them. And there's also, I saw at least one spot that it referred back to uh, not tying, I can't remember the exact language on it, not tying in, and it can come back to council at any time. So I, I don't, I like the agreement the way it is. I'm, I'm not sure what all we were going to change. It. It's we'll we'll give you a red line so you'll know what's changed in it. But really, we're just trying to clean up some utility issues so that there's not a misunderstanding later, and they come back and say, "But that's not exactly what it says in paragraph three, because they will." And it's um, important, Councilmember Plunkett and Councilmember Crouch. I'll just reiterate: that one of the reasons we're able to do this is because we're building a wastewater treatment plant and a water treatment plant. You can't oversize for capacity that you do not have. So, there, you know, there's there's a chicken, there's an egg, there's a, you know, you got to do things decently and in order. So, um, it's I'm super glad that we've got the infrastructure in place to be able to do this. Yeah, it's nice to have that. Your mic's off. It's nice to have that uh, capability to know that we can add on to it or add another module yep. on in the future. So um, thank goodness we're not on our uh, dollar general special on the wastewater treatment plant that we had before from Austin, and we're on to a state-of-the-art with capacity. Well, to we're expand. still on it right now, but we're so <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to entertain a motion. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve from Councilmember Plunkett. Second. And a second from Councilmember Crouch. Let me clarify the motion. I think that you are approving the first reading and then um, you, the second reading, try to come back on May 9th if we can. And if it's minor changes, I'll put it on consent. And if, it's, if, if we find something that we feel like we need to visit with you about, we'll put it on for individual consideration. I'm sure I wouldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Is that all right with you, Councilmember yes. Crouch? Yes. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Councilmember Plunkett? Yes. Councilmember Crouch? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? Yes. Councilmember Kirkland? Yes. Thank you, Council. It's, uh, 
it's a big deal. I'm glad that we're making some steps forward. All right, Council, we're on item 9E. Hold a public hearing and consider action to approve the first reading of ordinance number 2023-13 of the City Council of the City of Bastrop, Texas, continuing the curfew for minors as established in ordinance 2020-09, article 8.05, and providing for an effective date and move to include on the May 9th, 2023 consent agenda for a second reading. Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. This evening, I will be presenting to you a review of the juvenile curfew or ordinance for the city of Bastrop. Local government code section 370 requires that before the third anniversary of adoption, the ordinance is reviewed, a public hearing is held, and the ordinance is either abolished, continued, or modified. The curfew ordinance was originally adopted by the City of Bastrop City Council in 1994. The ordinance was last approved April 28, 2020. According to, the, to our ordinance, the definition of a minor is age 10 or older and under the age of 18. The curfew ordinance currently defines the date and time for curfew hours as Sunday through Friday, 11 p.m. until 5 a.m., Friday and Saturday, 12.01 a.m. till 5 a.m., and Monday through Friday during BISD school hours. The minor and their parent or guardian can be held accountable for a curfew violation. Also, the owner or employee of a business can be cited for violating the ordinance. If a violation occurs, an officer may issue a Class C citation. This can result in community service, a fine, or both. A judge can then determine if a deferral, a dismissal, or a conviction is appropriate. This graph depicts the number of curfew citations issued by the City of Bastrop Police Department and also by BISD police officers from 2020 to present. So you can see in the 2022, the City of Bastrop Police Department issued four citations. BISD police issued 27, and the four that we issued were violations that occurred during school hours. This chart depicts a number of citations issued by the Bastrop Police Department and BISD by year as it pertains to race. So for example, the four citations that Bastrop Police Department issued in 2022 were all juveniles that identified as white. This graph depicts the number of juvenile suspects, the types of incident, um, excuse me. This graph depicts the number of juvenile suspects, their incidents that the Bastrop Police Department has had since 2020. Uh, these numbers include curfew violations. So for example, we have not issued any Class C citations for a juvenile curfew, but we have issued three citations, and this could be for something such as an assault. And this final graph further breaks down the previous slide and it depicts the types of juvenile offenses that our agency has investigated. So for example, you'll note it says PODP on the graph um, and PODP is possession of drug paraphernalia. This would be a class C citation. And this is from 2020 to present. So the goals of the curfew ordinance um, the goals of keeping the juvenile curfew ordinance include assisting in keeping children in school, assist with minors from becoming involved, or at least identifying minors that are involved as a victim or a suspect in criminal activity, and location accountability. So if a juvenile is encountered by one of our officers, we will always attempt to coordinate with the parent or the uh, school before issuing that citation. Then, any questions? Good job, Chief. Councilmember Kirkland. Yes, a couple questions. So uh, you had a few uh, occasions where this was enforced. Um, are you familiar with those circumstances, or any of those circumstances? Can you tell me some anecdotal stories about how those happen or? So, yes. <laughs> uh, for example, one would be if the officers are patrolling the park or if they get dispatched to a suspicious activity in the park and they approach the vehicle or the individuals in the park, they may not know if they're minors at the time of the approach. They'll perform kind of their 
investigation and then it's discovered at one o'clock in the morning that there's drugs involved and then these people are minors and at that point they will um, depending on the circumstances receive a curfew citation parents get called things of that nature also I will give you the anecdotic sto anecdotal story that um, a principal who I'm not going to call out told me that he walks home every day for lunch and if he sees kids that he knows are supposed to be in school, he calls Bastrop police and asks them to ticket the kids for curfew. Okay. Um, how do we handle uh, homeschoolers? There's a, it says defense to prosecution. Uh, there's kind of some vague language that might allow a homeschooler because their regular school is not in session, but depending on how you interpret regular school, it may or may not apply to them. Uh, Alan, did you get a response on that one? Well, I can help you with that because okay. I was at municipal court this morning, and okay. when, so they'll plead not guilty, it's a homeschooler, mm -hmm. and if they can get evidence of the homeschooler, they won't write the ticket. If there's, if there's stories that aren't adding up, then they'll issue the citation, and then when they go to court, they have the opportunity, and um, our municipal judge called a recess and went and called the principal of the school that the parents said the child was um, homeschooling. homeschooling. But they get their TEA has a report and you are registered in that homeschooling school. And so um, sometimes if they've got, if they're, some of the truancy cases is what municipal court sees quite a bit. And um, sometimes if they're in truancy problems, they'll be pulled from a school and saying that they're homeschooling, so they have to submit documentation to confirm the homeschooling. But they, if the police officers aren't able to verify it at the time, it certainly is cleaned up at municipal court. Mr. Borquez? Yes, Mayor and Council, what I was going to add is that it, it is a defense in our code that the school which the minor attends was not in session. And so if the minor, or more likely their parents, provide documentation that they actually are registered for home school and going through that, and it was not in session, that's a defense to prosecution. Mm -hmm. And the prosecutor would probably dismiss it at that point. If not, a second opportunity would be for the judge to dismiss it. So, Alan, I, I think my next set of questions are kind of for you. Okay. Um, if we were to place language very similar to this uh, for all Bastrop citizens, for instance, regardless of age, or place a completely different set of criteria on it. There would certainly be constitutional issues and it would get thrown out probably pretty quickly. Um, is, how does this apply when it's minors, constitutional protections? And there is a defense to prosecution uh, that talks about exercising First Amendment rights and freedom of assembly and so on. And it seems like freedom of assembly should be very liberally interpreted such that, yeah, I'm gonna walk across the street and hang out with my buddy is freedom of assembly potentially. Um, are they just not availing themselves of the, of the ability to say that and, and have a defense to prosecution? Or is there a constitutional thing here? Like, what, how does this fit? How do courts interpret this? And I don't mean like the municipal court, but, you know, up the chain. Certainly, the, I'll, I'll reach back the couple decades ago that I took juvenile justice as an elective in law school where I was confronted with the reality that for juveniles, there's seldom justice. <laughs> to the extent they don't have the same rights as adults. Okay. Because they are a protected class, society uh, treats them differently than other uh, uh, people and citizens. They have fewer rights than grown adults do because of their age. So uh, every curfew challenge that I've seen that's along these lines has been uh, upheld by the courts. Uh, that's one reason why I believe the legislature at least put in this one provision which says you must review it every three years. They don't put any other strings on it besides that. Uh, we do have the authority in Bastrop to have curfews that apply to adults, but that's only in times of a declared disaster, um, and those have been upheld as well. So we can curtail people's freedoms, their rights to assemble and to move about. If we have a, a public purpose in doing so, it's very limited. Um, and um, Like during a flood or a fire and there's oh, looting yeah. going Civil on. Civil unrest. Yeah. Uh, there, there's several things that we could do that for, but it's got to be limited for a legit reason, and we follow due process to do so. It's easier to do it with juveniles. There are specific special interest groups out there that do not favor these curfews. They have brought lawsuits uh, before, but overall, 
not very successful. So they advocate on the policy side, whether it's the right thing to do or not. And we can certainly have that discussion if council wants to have a policy discussion. I'm sure Chief Stefanik would be glad to help with that. But at this point, what we have, I think, would uh, sustain any sort of legal challenge if it's renewed by the council. That's a policy choice for the city council. Okay, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Hi, Chief, how are you? Good, how are you, ma'am? And, and I could be wrong, but have a few cities around have taken away the curfews have have their cities? they have yes ma'am mm -hmm. yeah. um, primarily the one that I researched the most was probably Austin um, and although we're not typically in population the same as them, right. they have disbanded their their um, curfew laws so why do you think some cities are disbanding it and some aren't so from what I can tell, it looks like most of the cities were disbanding it because it is it provides the premise of crime prevention with juveniles. However, the, the take that I get on it is not so much the crime prevention aspect because typically when we respond, we're not responding and observing people walking down the street and stopping them because we're juveniles. We are already dispatched to a, something that's already occurring um, and so ours is more uh, identifying crime trends, I would say, at that point. And it, most of the time, we don't know they're juveniles until after we start the investigative portion of it. Um, I believe APD, and I could be wrong, but I believe they disbanded theirs because their, their crime statistics uh, were not dropping with the juveniles and their curfew law. Ours are kind of insignificant compared to Austin Police Department. Um, but for us, it's more of a community policing aspect because as a mother, if my kid's on the street at two o'clock in the morning, I want to know why, especially if she's already involved in something. Um, and so for us as a smaller police department and also for Bastrop ISD, I believe they can use it as a tool. It is more of a um, identifying mecha mechanism than it is so much of a preventive mechanism. Thank you. Thanks. From a from a truancy standpoint um, and like we are not gonna solve public school financing tonight. We'll put that off to another day. But um, although they have to build their properties and their facilities for enrollment, they get paid by attendance. And so they are very interested in having, having you guys in school. And that's why these guys are always in school and doing extra mm -hmm. hours. But um, that, that's, that's really an opportunity, and I think you can see that the majority of the curfew tickets that are written are written by BISD. So this is a way that the city partners with the school to ultimately keep crime down, keep the kids in school, and um, I kept hearing this morning over and, all, over and over, there is Texas state law that if you are less than 18 and you do not have a GED, GED or a diploma, you are supposed to be in school and your parents have an obligation to get you your high school education. It's Texas state law. All right. One other thing, and I voiced my opinion the last time we went over this ordinance, but I'm gonna voice it again. I have a problem with part of the being held ac accountable to any owner or employee, how we're supposed to ask them, are they homeschooled or are they not homeschooled? I don't know how an owner of a business is supposed to police the kids that are there and me them being liable to get a ticket well. is, is just hard. <laughs> and I, I, you know. I, I will say that when I researched it, we have not written a ticket for an owner or a business. However, there is actual state law that deals with that kind of stuff. So even though it is in our ordinance, um, the Texas child labor laws are, are applicable more so for the business. Um, but if there's a violation of an employer, it's actually a TWC, a Texas Workforce, Workforce Commission right. um, <laughs> issue. So, but that takes it to that level and not on your So plate. it actually does. So more than likely, if there's an issue with an employer and, and it's consistent and it's, it's developed, not just, hey, you're on you know, this property doing this, we're going to write you a citation after researching it and probably using some common sense, if there's an issue, we would more than likely uh, tell the work or file a complaint with the Workforce Commission so that way they can maybe look at the bigger picture um, along with coordinating with the parents and the business owner first. So we would be okay with removing that from the ordinance then? 
Um, it probably would be okay from remo removing that from the ordinance. However, if it was removed, we're kind of just taking one more tool that we may need if we're not getting the immediate assistance from the TWC. So I may file a complaint with them. It could take six months, but if there's a bigger issue and right now we need to deal with that issue, which, like I said, we haven't had that issue, but if we needed to, the, the availability of having it in our ordinance is always nice. And that so. ticket's going to send you to municipal court first. Yes, ma'am. For the employer. Yeah, the, so. well, anybody that gets I'm the ticket. I'm just letting you yeah. know I still voice in my opinion, and I'm only one vote. But and I believe I they're more restrictive. <laughs> TWC, I believe, is more restrictive than our ordinance. It is. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Councilmember Kirkland? Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Um, there's a defense to prosecution for uh, employment activity. Um, but in your former line of work, uh, you reasonably had many children in, uh, in your place of business. And, uh, and it would apply more for that group of kids that aren't working for you and whether or not they were you know, allowed to be there or not. Oh, I totally understand that. I'm just saying that I don't think, as a business owner, I want to go out there and ask that kid, are you in school, how old are you, and put that responsibility on the business owner. That's what I'm saying. So. Uh, I would support you in that. So that's just my opinion. And hopefully Kevin will support me in that. Yes. I just need a motion. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. We have to have our public hearing. So I'm going to open it and I'll let you guys think about how you want to word that. I'm opening the public hearing. Madam Secretary, do we have anyone signed up for the public hearing? No, Mayor. All right. We've officially closed the public hearing. Councilmember Kirkland. Oh, wait, Mayor, Mr. Borquist. If I may, I have no position on whether or not to keep that subsection of the ordinance or not, but I do want to make sure council is aware that for a business owner that is charged with violating the curfew ordinance by allowing minors to loiter at their business, uh, the prosecution would have to prove that they knowingly did that and they intentionally did that. And so if a business owner has no idea what the age of the person is in their shop, then I think it'd be unlikely that they would get a citation. If they did, I think the prosecutor would have a great deal of difficulty proving knowingly and intentionally. I don't know if that changes your position, but I want to make sure that you knew those words were in there. I don't go into businesses and police them. Whether this is a valuable tool or not, I will leave to the chief. I motion that we take that out because I don't want to take my time off of the day to go to court to find out I'm not guilty. So I motion that we accept the, the curfew ordinance with that change or that removal. I have a motion from Mayor Pro Tem Rogers that would approve the first reading of ordinance 2023-13 with the removal of the, and I don't know how to phrase, do we know what section it is? I do. It's section 8.05.002C. C. Yeah. 8.05.002C being removed. I have a motion from Mayor Pro Tem Rogers. Second. And a second from Council Member Plunkett. Two employers. Imagine that. Is there any further discussion? Madam Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Mayor Pro Tem Rogers? Yes. Council Member Plunkett? Yes. Council Member Crouch? Yes. Council Member Kirkland? Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. That is approved. Great job, Chief. You did good. All right, Council, we've got one item left. It is 827, and we will be going into executive session on the following item. City Council shall convene and close executive session pursuant to Section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code to discuss the interview process for an associate judge. It will be Council and uh, Mr. Borquez in executive session. It is 828, and we are in executive session. Thank you. It is 849 and we are out of executive session. There will be no um, action taken as a result of executive session, which gets us to the top of page six, item number 12. Council Member Kirkland. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn from Council Member Kirkland. And second. a second from, I think, Council Member Plunkett, Plunkett beat you. Beat it is 849 and we are adjourned.